Got a pickup truck with a dog box Slam full of hounds that don't know when to stop Until the old male Rambo's his name He's quick on his feet, hell on game Got a little chip in the back of the pack She ain't real fast, but she's true on the track She's got to drive and she's got the guts And that's why she's gonna run with us It's in the blood in your veins, you can't Time is passed down through your family name. It's a pack of dogs coming through the pines. Lights of fire in a young boy's eyes. It's the word of the hound. It sounds just right. It's dog time. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Tonight's video is going to be a gear review of all the gear that I use in the summertime because each season it's a little bit different. I like to be comfortable and also mobile, especially when I have a lot of camera equipment. So I'm going to go through everything as far as what I wear, what I use for my dogs, and also what I use to film. First, I'm going to go with the clothes that I wear in the summertime. For a little over a year now, I've been wearing the new Bikina boots, and I can say these are my favorite boots. They're very comfortable, they fit my feet well, and the traction on them is great, and I've worn them all over the country in all different weather conditions now. I've hunted below zero, and I've hunted to where it's almost 100 degrees, daytime and nighttime, in flat country, in mountains, in swamps all over and they're, they're still holding up really well they're not leaking and i'm really really happy with these boots typically a pair of boots of mine would last six months and i have to get a new pair these have lasted really really well and i'm very happy with them and i will say with boots and most things that i do use just because i say that it works for me i still encourage you to go to places like autumn oaks or an event where you can actually go and try this stuff on because everyone's going to have different size feet and everyone's built differently so it'll fit you differently but this is what I found that is most comfortable for me and most effective for me. Then underneath my boots, I actually recently found these things called Bama Socks. And they're a lifesaver. I wish I would have found these a long time ago. They're great in the wintertime. They're great even in the summertime. They just keep your feet dry. It prevents your feet from getting sweaty. It lets them breathe. And they're very comfortable inside these rubber boots. And I will not hunt without these. As far as socks, I just have regular plain white long socks. Also, a lot of times if it's really, really dry and I know I'm not going to be around any water, we don't have to worry about snakes or anything here, so I usually just wear like work boots with shorts. A lot of times in the summertime, especially during the daytime, I'm not opposed to wearing just shorts. I like being comfortable. I don't care if my legs get scratched up a little bit. Don't have to worry about poisonous snakes here or anything, so I just try and be comfortable when I'm in the woods. And then when I'm wearing these athletic shorts like I am tonight, I just put an old belt on, and that's what I hook my boots up to. Sometimes I also wear the camo cargo shorts that you can get at like Walmart and places like that. Then I just hook my boots up with the belt loops a lot of times. And then moving up, I have the Razor vest, and if you've been following me for a while, you know that I used to have an old Cabela's vest that my mom got me at a garage sale when I was just a little kid, and that thing was great, but it was really heavy. This is great for me all year round. It's very adjustable. You can wear just a t-shirt underneath it, or you can let out the straps on the side, give you some more space, so you can wear hoodies and layers underneath it in the wintertime also. It has plenty of pocket space. Even for my big cell phone, the front zipper pocket, it fits right down in there great. That's where I put my car keys. It is a great vest, and it's my favorite one that I've had so far. Next thing I'm wearing is my Coon Squalor. This is the Bayou Legacy Game Calls Tree Shaker Coon Squalor. I've had this one for close to two years now. Same read. Works great. Makes them look. I've used this one a lot, and there's a lot of great squalors out there, but this is my favorite one that I've used. Um, I used to have an old Timothy ball that was my dad's. It was orange. It was from, I think, like the 60s. And the lanyard and all that was getting really worn out and I figured I should probably retire that one before I lost it in the woods and I upgraded to this one. It looks cool, it works great. I post a lot of videos using this, so when you see eyes in my videos, it's probably because of this. Obviously tracking systems are huge nowadays. If you've been following me for a while, I've been using Dogtra products for the last two years. In another video, I'll probably go back and show like my older equipment that I used when, like, when I was a kid or even get some of my dad's older equipment, like go back, way back, and show kind of cooning equipment through the years. But this is what I use right now. This is the Dogtra Pathfinder 2. A lot of times I still will use my Dogtra Pathfinder 1 because I have a mini collar for that. And as you know, I run a lot of pups. So I still run the 1 and the 2, and that's what we'll be using the night is the 2 because of my blue tick pup. As you've seen, he's getting really, really big, and that collar will fit on him now. With that being said, I'll move on. This is the leash I use. I've used many different kinds over the years. I have pretty much one or two in each color they make. This one is one of my favorites just because red is my son's favorite color, so I got this for him. We use this one together a lot. It is 
got the reflector on it like the collars do, the day glow reflective collars. I've bought these for many different companies over the years. I usually can't go to an event like Autumn Oaks or anything like that without buying two or three lead straps and collars and all sorts of stuff. Last thing I got on is my Big Dog Blitz light. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I've been using Big Dog lights for the last 12 years now. So even before I've been making YouTube videos, I use Big Dog lights. It was back in the summer of I think 2010. I went to Autumn Oaks and it was when these style of lights were getting really popular. The old light I had wasn't really holding up so I decided to go around to all the different vendors and try each one on and see which one I liked the best. And back then that was the Big Dog Genesis, the original one. And that's the one I went with because it felt the most comfortable and balanced and it was just as bright and had all the features the other ones did at the time. They've came out with the Big Dog Genesis Plus where they've added a few new features to that one and I do have that one also. It's a very nice light but I always seem to come back to the Big Dog Blitz. It's very comfortable. It has everything you could possibly need. I have other review videos specifically of this light. I'll briefly discuss this light, but like I said, I encourage you to go check out the review videos of this light specifically. It's a lot more in depth, but it has two walking lights, two red lights, two amber lights, which I really like. It reminds me of the old style uh, cap covers used to put on. Two green lights, very bright main beam, red, and green lasers. It has everything you could want. It holds a charge great. It's very comfortable, very balanced. I've been very happy with Big Dog and their customer service. And they treated me very well over the years and I really appreciate working with them. And that's why they're my favorite light company. And I'll just briefly discuss some of my camera equipment. And if you have any more specific questions about as far as filming, editing, or that aspect of things that I do, just leave it in the comments below. But the camera that I'm filming this with and I film all my hunts with is actually a Sony A6400 camera. And right now it's sitting on a tripod but I do use a gimbal and that makes it very convenient. And when you use a gimbal, it's a stabilizing device that you can take with you. It makes the footage look really smooth and stable. And mine is actually currently broken, so I'm in the process of getting a new one. But that one lasted me about two years before it let go and that thing has been through a lot of different stuff. Dirt, sand, water, snow. It's been through it all, so it's been good to me, but it's time to upgrade and get something new. So that's what I mount the camera to. And like I said, that's a Sony A6400. And what really makes the difference in the camera is the lens. And the lens I have on this is a Sony 1.4 f-stop lens. And you can do some more research into them and kind of learn what that means. But just a brief description, pretty much that type of lens does really, really well in low light conditions. It's a wide angle lens, so it lets more light in so you can see better at night, which is great for coon hunting. And as you've seen over the years, it's great for pictures and videos as well. As far as lights that I use most of the time with my camera, I have a little GoPro light, just a little bright LED light. Just I use that when I take pictures, but when you're seeing the actual video footage, I rarely ever even use a light, and if I do, that's just the walking light on my Big Dog Blitz, because with that lens, you don't need a ton of light, and that's just something you gotta really work at and know what you're looking at and know what you're doing. It takes a lot of practice. I've been doing this for a couple years now, so that's why my stuff looks pretty good. I'm completely self-taught. It just took a lot of practice. You can do research on your own like I did and just see, teach yourself how the camera works, what the stuff means. It's not that complicated if you put the time into it. And as far as the audio I use when I'm hunting, I just have a cheap shotgun mic that's mounted on the top of my camera. I want to say it was like 60 or 80 bucks. It just screws on the top of your camera and just hooks into the audio port. It's a directional mic that has a windbreaker on it, so if it gets windy, it blocks out the wind noise. And if you aim at the direction the dogs are barking, it picks it up really well. And something else I want to discuss, I'll probably do this in the future, like my new iPhone that I have, it's the latest iPhone. The cameras on those things are getting to be amazing and I'm very, very impressed with the camera on it. Most people, honestly, with this newest camera would have a hard time telling the difference between some of the video I can get with my phone and this camera. So if you think you can't afford a camera and a phone, just next time you're up for an upgrade, look at the cameras on your phone, and, and most phones nowadays have great cameras, and I'll probably do a video completely filmed with my phone in the future just to show you guys how good it can look. And they do make gimbals for phones also that are pretty cheap. So I mean, if you already have a cell phone, you get a really cheap gimbal, and you can make very high quality stuff. The only thing I will say, pictures are still difficult at night because there's low light with fast movement. But as far as video quality, you could get some great video with a cell phone also. As far as editing goes, I have a MacBook laptop. For the majority of the videos you've seen, I've just used iMovie, which is a free editing software. It's really easy to use. Anyone can figure it out, and iPhones actually have that editing software on it also. So if you were filming with your phone, you could edit it all from your phone and upload it from your phone too. You wouldn't even need a computer. So that's what I use for the most part. I also use Adobe Premiere Pro, which is way more in depth and that can get a little bit fancier. If you want to look into that, you can as well, but you actually have to pay for that. And once again, if you have any more specific questions as far as pictures, videos, or anything like that, just leave it in the comments below and I'll contact you and we can discuss it in further detail for you. 
the ball. Good boy, Kyle. Good boy, buddy.